We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration, dear brothers and sisters. And now we stand with Rachel and Corey on the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Rachel's biggest concern, and she asked it in the car after she got married. She said, Mom, do you like Corey? He's like, you just married him? And I just want you to know, I know like you're a worrier and you have this like weird bond with Mom, but she likes Corey a lot. So today, of course, is about you, you know, Rachel and Corey, the simple fact that we wouldn't be here, some flying across the globe, uh, to be with you, to witness you laying down your lives for one another. But in another sense, a deeper, perhaps more mystical sense, even more mysterious and powerful than this. <laughs> I've known Corey when we were little kids hanging around the neighborhood. We didn't like him at first. We thought he was a little show off. He had this little walk, you know, swinging his arms about, and we just thought, who's this lad? Do you know what I mean? We then played football with him, and me and Robin thought, ah, he's all right. He's not actually that bad. And we became friends. As the years went by, we had a lot of memories. Most of the memories aren't suitable for this speech. Most of them did evolve around drinking while we were underage. Sorry, Val. <laughs> This cultural concept that has developed over millennia in eras and cultures, right? That's come to be known as love. But that's not quite it. We know that what it's describing, what we're here today for, is a person. And that love has a name, and his name is Jesus. So our love that could waver at times, these moments, how important to remember that our love, which is good and true and beautiful, is to be united and rooted in the most perfect of lovers, in Jesus whose love never fails. Rachel, you look stunning today. Absolutely stunning. Um, there's an awful lot of hard work to have to go in here to, to know what you did and um, over the few months. And I think especially, and your sister, she was being brilliant. She looked fantastic as well today. Um, I gotta give thanks to your mom, Kalev your dad, Matt, and as well as looking after my son, all of us would appreciate it. Seven years ago, him and Corey both left for a far from place in the world, London and here. I didn't take it too personally when they left me. I tried to get over fairly quickly, but uh, with the different time zones and the long distance, we still managed to stay good friends, and it's testament to these two lads, you know, they're my best friends, and we stayed best friends throughout that whole time. Rachel. Oh, you're an absolute girl boss. Uh, <laughs> Corey couldn't have married better than her. <laughs> but you are just my inspiration for so many things. I've never met someone who is like so strong, like emotionally and physically. <laughs> you can beat me up in every way. Rachel is just like a ball of worry. And it's so good. Like she's like that great balance and you just balance her out. Like you have such strength in your calmness. And that's just so admirable about you. Like how you always make fun of her, but in like the nicest way possible. And like that humor lightens Rachel's heart so much. Corey is completely exposed, you could say, right? He bears no armor. Literally down on a knee, couldn't react too fast to say if Rachel had wanted to backhand him right in the moment, right? <laughs> He's just there awaiting a response, humbling himself. Rachel, for your part, you had all the power in that moment 
He could have retained it, but he didn't. He chose to give it all to you, literally lowering himself in front of your presence and your gaze. We are both so happy and proud of Corey making it in America and finding the love of his life. The first time I met Rachel, I could tell she gave off a great vibe and you could tell she's the boss. I, Corey, take you, Rachel, to be my wife. I, Rachel, take you, Corey, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad. In sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. In the morning. Um, now it took Corey a while to kind of reveal this to us. He's uh, he keeps his cards close as chess sometimes. So I think a few months later he finally let out that he he met a lovely local girl, and you could see from the start that he was madly in love with Rachel. We met her for the first time in person in July, and it was like we'd known each other for years. Me, Carrie, Simi, it's like we'd known each other such a long time. Can I be close to you? To know this, right, that Jesus, we've been talking about this whole time, right, the most perfect of lovers, the most faithful, that he has first loved you. Before we even met each other, he loved you. Before your parents met, he loved you. Before the earth and before the Big Bang, he knew you intimately and loved you. And he is with you now in this moment, looking fondly upon you as a proud father would. There's this quote that our mom's obsessed with, and it's about like the most extraordinary thing in the world is an ordinary woman and an ordinary man and their ordinary family. And I just can't wait for you guys to get to live the mundane together. And that's where you're going to find like Christ-like love. I'm not going to toast because I'm not 21, but you all can drink anyway. Can I be close to you? Rachel. Corey. Receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. And the Son. Of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. I now have the beautiful pleasure and honor of introducing Mr. and Mrs. O'Neill.